All right, everyone, remember when Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz vowed to hire 10,000 refugees because he was so upset with the president's first travel ban order? Well, if you don't remember, I'm telling you about it, and I can also tell you that that move is firing back on him big time. According to a brand new YouGov brand index survey, customers have a less favorable view of Starbucks following that big refugees push. You know, this isn't the first time that Starbucks has tried to go political. Do you remember when they decided to have those plain red cups? You see them there for the holidays because they wanted to be accepting, they said, of all religions. Or when they started writing race together, hashtag race together on cups in order to encourage talks about race relations. Well, both of those movements also backfired. So I'm just saying, isn't it time that Starbucks stay out of politics and just serve up the coffee? Joining me right now, Fox News contributor Mercedes Schlapp and Democratic strategist and senior director of research at Bustle.com, Jessica Tarlow. Good to see you guys. I mean, hey, if I'm a shareholder in Starbucks, I don't like seeing these kind of antics, Mercedes, because I don't want politics in the workplace. Well, when these CEOs get involved in these political debates, there's going to be the, the political back, backfall. I mean, they're going to struggle with the fact that they uh, are pushing a certain political agenda and, I, and the CEO of Starbucks literally came out and said, I, I have a social obligation, a moral obligation to go out there and make my case and talk about my political views. Well, you're going to suffer the backlash because guess what? 40% of Americans are less likely to buy a product if that company or the leader espouses a different belief than they do. You know, we've seen that the retail sector is struggling. Starbucks is part of that retail sector. We know coffee bean prices, coffee futures are going up, which makes it uh, more challenging uh, to make a profit if you're Starbucks, although they're still charging plenty for a cup of coffee. Um, you know, so they're, they're up against it in certain ways, Jessica. To, to make a political claim, to really, you know, stake out your territory politically, I, I know you're, you're, you're very liberal, but... As a shareholder, can't, can't I, you, I mean, if you, if you own shares in Starbucks, wouldn't you be asking yourself, what is this company doing? I'm not completely sure, and I, listen, I, I don't own shares in Starbucks. I don't even actually drink coffee because I thought it would stump my growth, which was obviously not going to be a problem. Um, but what I would <laughs> say tall. here, <laughs> I'm very tall in case you haven't noticed that. Uh, but what I would say here is that I think that it is important for a lot of people, actually for Howard Schultz, to have advocated on behalf of the Syrian refugees and that point of view. So we'll see Come what on, happens. He's trying to sell coffee. That's it's, the, but the he price. isn't just trying to sell coffee. Starbucks has made it a point throughout their history actually to make political and social right. activism. And Americans are they turned off by that. They, in this case, yes, and the, they should suffer the consequences for that. This is the free market. This is what conservatives love more than anything. This is what happened with Ivanka Trump's line, and I know that it's back so, up so now. Just, you know, I, I'm just thinking about it from a shareholder's perspective. Politics aside, I'm trying to give them a little advice here. <laughs> it hasn't been working. It didn't work before. It's not going to work now. I mean, to Mercedes' point, they, you just want to go in and get your cup of coffee and well, be done with it. Well, you don't we, need to we hear are Howard's a, politics. And we're also in a political environment that is so radioactive. I mean, let's, let's think about the New Balance uh, CEO who came out and basically supported President Trump on trade. And what happened? You had the protesters come out burning the sneakers. So it does go both ways, uh, where in this environment where we have a businessman as a president of our country, uh, there is that sensitivity. And so I think that a CEO needs to think twice before they go and out the Under and make these political... CEO as well. Right. So essentially, well, have to backtrack yeah. off of that. Well, I mean, you know, and, and that was in, in, in many ways somewhat tragic because Kevin Plank, I know him well. He's a very smart guy, understands the economy, built that business, by the way, started it while he was in college in his parents' garage. So he is a, a true testament but to American success. But here's the thing. All he did was say, yeah, I think some of these economic policies may... Sense. And I'm sorry, Jessica, you know, again, politics aside, lower taxes, less regulation. Any CEO is pretty much going to tell you that's good. It, yes, but what I would say is, and I, I understand that, and we've seen people showing up on Trump's economic advisory boards going to these meetings who you wouldn't normally think. And in the beginning when Peter Thiel came out and said, actually, I'm going full tilt for this guy, and you wouldn't expect it actually as a gay American and such a successful businessman that he'd be backing him in that way because we know how Silicon Valley is so liberal. But I would say that in these times and with this particular president, this isn't just backing up liberals or being a Democrat. Donald Trump has advocated for policies that are much more extreme than what we've heard from well, our but, but the corporate, well, you might you might think that of course i don't agree but it, but well, you did but when he came out and but said this shows the divide of america said, we are it's, calling for a total shutdown of muslims coming to the it United wasn't States. the total shutdown of but all muslims it was said, seven countries but that's what he seven said countries, on the campaign hall i'm talking about
about what he said on the campaign trail Either way, is what people remember. Right, last word to Mercedes, and then we go. Well, the coffee, did, the coffee did stunt my growth, apparently, because I'm only five to three. But I think that it does not help these CEOs to be so politically vocal if they are thinking about their bottom line risk. And I think you're seeing that impact in the case of Starbucks. All right, and good they run see, that risk. Yeah, good to see both you guys. Thanks and, uh, a lot. You both look great, so no worries on <laughs> All sides is accepted here at Fox Business. <laughs>